Okay, we have come from long distance, so we are making more than one presentation. Let us see. We are. So uh, today I talked about the 15th architecture. Like today, uh, most of that time in my career, I was working on the testing aspect and system development. I was trying to cover something on the test system activities for the AOCS software test testing. So what is my topic today? Uh, so I am going to in my agenda. I am going to cover something like this: some introduction about the test system, where we stand, uh, what are the types of test systems we have, the testing requirements of the AOCS system, and the architecture which we envisage, and uh, the design of features, something like this, and some summary. So system developments are going on in ISRO. So with respect to AOCS related, we have the control digital area where uh, showed it. Uh, so we have the uh, digital electronics group and dynamics and simulation group, which they, they, who give the requirements. And the, uh, there are different divisions for onboard hardware, software development, and test system development. In the test system development, we have teams for software, hardware, VLSI designs, procure designs, which we customize, and dev drivers, applications, and uh, uh, architecture has some two types of interfaces, like host systems and the front end process different types of developments take place. And of course, our AOCS testing that goes on in the hill system and check out and development areas. So that was so carried out using discrete individual units initially. And uh, we also had some states, the DOS-based systems, uh, still faced in the 90s and with command line interfaces. And uh, we also had 8086-based uh, uh, some front-end processes. Added to digital Unix systems and uh, present that into the Linux based OS systems and the FTP systems. Uh, of the most of the AOCS testing, which in the development phase, in the mission phase, which I'll be covering subsequently. So yes, and uh, it's a part of onboard computer. I am going to talk about mostly about AOCS. The computer also takes care of the housekeeping systems and uh, uh, terminal things. And concentrating on this part, which is the interfaces with various sensors, the, including the GPS receive interfaces with country and uh, it also look angles for the uh, beam angles for the antennas and payload systems, action wheels, thrusters, and torques. These are basic uh, interfaces. So functions being the attitude and orbit control, basically various sensor interfaces, uh, various types of interfaces, miscellaneous are there. The actual interfaces are there and and being about computer, it is also having the time reference. As of the cases, it also has to have the reference generation for the attitude profile, which all are the part of the onboard flight software. And it'll base or for maneuver or uh, LAB pointing or uh, for the more between session. For all those things, there'll be a profile generation, attitude reference generation. And for the case of orbit information also, there'll be a profile generation. It may be based or GPS based in lower orbit. So all the uh, things are part of AOCS software, and uh, also telemetry telecommand, and 1553 control, and uh, solar ray drive, and antenna control, and safety logics, and operational autonomy. All this come part of the AOCC functions. We built here, uh, uh, we have been uh, building the, uh, continuously improving the test system architecture for these functions to test how to do that is a basic uh, aspect. So, system is configured to have uh, take care of the hardware test. Of course, the solid level test is not this test system, but some of that is carried out, which I will tell, tell about it. Uh, to test a computational check, some part is getting covered. And functional checks, of course, all will be covered. And the hardware software, when, when the system is integrated with hardware, this takes care of the, all the test, testing aspects. And we also have the testing like open loop tests, where the static inputs are fit and the response of the AOS CC system is checked, software is checked. Also, there's a kind of special test which is called open dynamic test where the input profile will be varied according to as it is expected in the closed loop environment. But the closed loop will not be taken into the system. That is a dynamic test which is normally called a simulated input profile. And this majorly gives us a very good advantage that we can find which is the cause and the action because when it is in closed loop, we can make out which is the cost and which is the action, so that will be more difficult. So we go for the simulator input profile wherever required. 
most of dynamic test is where the onboard computer is in loop simulation that is where the the dynamic is in loop it will be in dynamic mode and mission scenario test environmental and the validation test for operation when we go for some operations like critical like mars orbit insertion something like that or any tmi or any such cases we go for a operation validation test running through all these procedures once in the test bed that is a major requirement which was accomplished and um, other test system see uh, uh, the, the 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 same test system is not being used for hardware in loop simulation because it's just a modified version and only the onboard computer goes for the hardware in loop simulation test and the integrated test cap test so that is one another aspect so to at this architecture we were contributing we were contemplating so many type of in, in, uh, architectures where we finally came out to a distributed architecture where there'll be a front end processor which just directly interfacing with the system and the test with a lot of interfaces so all the hardware device servers everything going to that that is the host system will be interacting with the user and it will be the user interface and most of the dynamic software or high end softwares run there that uh, makes it uh, and it will be an ethernet interface dedicated interface so we get a real time performance we use uh, the communication be different in another aspect of putting this type of architecture is the addition to the front end processor interface it also collects the interface information from so many data acquisition systems and everything comes into the host so basically it has all the load simulation 15 bit simulators and it supports all the loop closed loop testing for verification timing verification and the server will be there for all interfaces models and then simulation and automatic testing most of the testing is carried out in automatic way means uh, the test prof the test cases will be running automatically from host system and it will get passed to the interface to the system and the test so but of it which will be used for diagnostic so these are the uh, sub node sub uh, sub systems of the test system we have the pci based cards and 15 bit cards and it's with the uh, interfaces and the, some testing is going on here and the uh, graphical user interface software with multiple pages can be done and we have some uh, uh, simulations also available so texture is with uh, like host system which is a linux based system and on tcp ip it contacts with the uh, front end processor which is uh, very interfaces to very the hardware to have the cards to select the respective interfaces in 1523 and also uh, the information from various instruments like uh, Uh, Characters, testing, DCM, setting it connects, and the metric data acquisition system, which is in receiving the data from the onboard system, will also be on the TCP/IP, and it, it also gives the sensor stimuli and interface units and load units. The most of the cases to check the exact load performance, the thruster loads and the torquer loads, all these are put so that the performance also is verified and which is also verified. And the, with some all interest connections, it will be onboard computer will be connected to this system. So the software architecture also is slightly, uh, I won't say it's complex, but it is having a lot of data to process, and real-time requirements are coming because it has to run at a very high real-time uh, to uh, to take unit-level testing requirements, or simulator input profiles. So the software will have the 15 bit three in one side, other side is the command sensor actuator systems, non 15 bit three things, and the data acquisition system. The, normally, the software is divided into two. aspects one is the good uh, very important real time aspects where uh, we have to update the sensors and activated data for aoc functions and the data real time perform they are all uh, done in real time uh, uh, data processing and non real time of course for the all data housekeeping data which are coming as a monitoring purpose or uh, acquired in non time in stream based acquisition and they are left for the processing such things so this is how the uh, the architecture is uh, different and uh, the basic uh, the software management is done the real time and non real time are segregated and uh, the user process communication or shared memory and queues are uh, used to see that the real time performance is maintained so that the user interfaces are always uh, taken through queues and uh, shared memories normally the kernel preemption and memory loss such things are already put always put and uh, normally Uh, when the testing is carried out there will be a lot of uh, observations that uh, it may not match the output may not match so to find out whether the problem is 
with respect to the onboard, we may have to put some diagnostic counters like deadline miss, whether it has missed the deadline. And also, if suppose some integration is going on on the onboard accumulation, the same thing is done in the ground so that it is cross-checked end of the thing that uh, the problem is an onboard or ground or an interface. So these type of things are always good. And processors are there, uh, processors are there in front-end processor as well as the host system. And the data processing plus GUI is uh, additional, which is slightly, it, it is not like that type of hard real-time, but it is also getting data in real-time, but it is having some uh, limit. And the offline software are so this uh, our organized. The one more important aspect in the our organization is that uh, the the same interface is always kept for whether we are going to do open loop testing or closed loop testing or simulator input profile. So the uh, the, the data processing and everything uh, is maintained same. The user gives for the input the GUI and the telecommand sensor activity and this portion will remain same whether the is coming from sensor model or open loop spacecraft model, open loop model everything it remains same. And the rest of the paths are same. That uh, it will go to front end processor and system under test. So the, the open loop testing requires that to generate the data for stimuli, telecommands, and test system settings, and, uh, and instruments and dynamics and initial conditions. So these are things which are managed across the different processes. So this aspect where this is one place where we have to maintain a very good real time because we are trying to find out. The exact uh, the computational output of the onboard system uh, by giving a, a dynamic uh, input stimuli. Exactly synchronous mode with the onboard. This is one part which we spend uh, a good time aspect with all diagnostics. We see that the inputs which are entered are reaching the onboard, and the output from the onboard are reaching to the test system, and they are verified. This is the one place where we we see that the real time performance is guaranteed, and uh, this is what will be helping us in diagnosing the uh, interfaces first. Before going into the closed loop testing, the step input is simulated. Normally, it is in the order of eight milliseconds where the data is simulated, and it is most uh, every time it is synchronized with some onboard clock. Of course, the latency is that latency will be accounted uh, in terms of cycles, and it will be verified for the result. So now, uh, because being the open loop system, we also to take care of the latency. The data will be provided in advance, advance information from. The on will be coming, or advanced data update to the onboard will be happening. So set up when we the loop, when we take the actuated data output back into the system, it becomes a closed loop system. All the dynamics logics will be verified, where the inter but the interface simulations and rest of the interfaces will remain same. And the input for this now in the earlier case, the input was arriving just as a file or some uh, double buffered input. Where now the output, input for the sensor stimuli input will come from the software, where the simulation will be carried out with, with uh, various uh, models. So this kind of dynamics model will be there, the closed loop simulation, including the, the as a, as a solar, solar array position, and will be simulated, and all the, actua all the uh, actuators data will be taken, and the sensors will be updated. This is one critical thing where we uh, try all the uh, extreme cases, which cannot be done in hardware loop simulation. The hardware in loop simulation will have a lot of difficulties. Different uh, scenarios are we cannot exceed the uh, exceed the uh, conditions uh, because actual hardware will be involved. This is the place where we check all extreme conditions and update uh, our uh, code code. So important and uh, in one more uh, important thing is with this is the mission scenarios. All the mission scenarios changing from different modes. Different creations, failure simulation, everything is possible in this mode. It will be normally used in validating almost all the FDIR logics in real time in dynamic environment. This is the one place. Because all, all those things will not be fully possible in the hardware in loop environment. So most of the testing is reserved in, in this area. So to the data scheduling and synchronization, as I told, we have a common uh, once uh, we decide between open loop or Closed loop or simulated profile, the data goes through the models, based models which remain the same, call the softwares and data acquisition software at FCP. And there again, the data from actuator is brought back to the to the actuator interface and to the actuator model into the chart into the system. This is how it is synchronized, and normally the synchronization will be carried out with the some onboard sync cycles, which will be done. And the basic internal simulation may run at much higher than the data. Processing data acquisition cycle. 
So it will be in front of 2 millisecond, whereas the data accretion cycle will be in front of 8 milliseconds. So that is done. And uh, this, uh, normally it is kept as a sub multiple so that we keep the proper integration in the ground and on board. So uh, the other aspect, how do we keep the sensors and other databases? Is, uh, we keep an object oriented approach because it is a runtime different objects will be created and classes will be created depending on the sensor. We have different types of sensors like simple analog sensors to yeah, 1553 sensor, a sensor which is uh, a uh, lot of data on 1553. All these are part of a component, and these instances will be created in real time or run time. And these models also present uh, the sensor models uh, from simple sensor model from the one which takes the uh, and uh, the orbital and everything it takes and generates the data. These are available as uh, interfaces. And for the actuators, also we keep the object to object based approach. We keep Different components like reaction wheel or torture or testers. So, so the instances will be created, and the data will be available from FEP from the processor and it will be going to the interface processing. And the model from actual model goes back to the open loop or closed simulation. So, other aspect is to run the spacecraft models. Once the data is arrived, all the data is synchronized from FEP or on board. Uh, which enters the uh, uh, to for all the generating all this data, we need some models to be running. It's attitude model, which may be just a profile, which may be a profile. Speed model, which may be again like a, a Fourier power series model or some other model, which uh, generates a numerical integrator, which will be running as orbit model or the sun position model. So all these are available in uh, similar models also run in the onboard almost, and the same models is duplicated and it is also run in the ground system. So the other like uh, sensor factors like mounting, misalignment, all these numbers, noise models can be added to the sensor models here. And spacecraft dynamics is another model which uh, includes some flexibility dynamics, everything. So they also, from actuator to spacecraft dynamics, they go. So it is done. So in case of uh, uh, NGC type of uh, requirements, uh, navigation uh, requirement 60 dynamics also simulation will be done. Important uh, interfaces that since the since the both the models of onboard and ground systems have to be synchronized in tandem, we need to arrive at a synchronization mechanism. Not it is done with the onboard interfaces itself because the onboard keeps sending some marker and time sync pulses and data. So it's itself captured by the test system and tries to synchronize. It can be in problem. So we also have the alternate methods to give through command some or something like that. So, see all these uh, ways are done, and there are provision to offset the string of the session. And uh, to, uh, like the discrete IOs are present to manually synchronize or through the DM stream or time sync transfer, these are available. So, also there are a lot of requirements like so exactly we want to find when such an event has come from the onboard software. So, to put, there are uh, ways to capture these events or capture the test system to at what uh, onboard time the event was captured. This is uh, also one of the interfaces which is extensively used in the screen. So I wanted to show how we uh, simulate our sensor. Uh, this is one thing which uh, we uh, see normally to check the timing and other aspects is difficult to just by finding the code or find out, but uh, if in case it is going to manipulate in some way which is easily understandable, it's very simple. So the, the thing is when we give some attitude error as a stimuli and we expect the same attitude error from the onboard output, suppose 0. degree we give here, 0. 0.1 degree, we expect it to output. In case any problem anywhere including the onboard or ground system, we, we find a number. If there is a time sink error, it manipulates the attitude error. In case of latency, there is a problem in onboard, it again transforms into an error. So the profiles are always done. Uh, this profile, the are running. The sun, earth, and profile reference are there. Similar profiles are running because the time is synchronized. If you have a time sync problem either in onboard or on ground, we get into a problem. But since time syncs, we have multiple ways of uh, checking. So we try to rule out which is a problem and try to find out which is the actual issue. So this interfaces go as it is in any case. Uh, there are always, if there is a problem in the interface, of course it comes in hardware in loop simulation, in the simulation 
but not detect before actual testing is done. Any problem in this area, it, it shows up in that. That is how we try to find a problem, so which is easily discernible, which can be seen from the numbers. So that is really done to take care of the, all the time things, such as latency situation, which is otherwise complicated to verify exactly. We able to uh, accurately find out within eight milliseconds of error, which was uh, we find it sufficient for our mission. So. A defect of the test system is the non real time or really non okay it's not so non real time but the data processing software which uh, collects the data a lot of data one is to have the data every eight milliseconds make it available to all the thrusters and motor pulses and the data to the other simulators where in real time or uh, the data processing data the lot of data will be coming like housekeeping data and then the actuator data since exactly the what the actuator is being driven at uh, the highest 32 millisecond rate or at the cycle, have to be captured at the faster rate and it should be made available for the analysis. And for each of the actuators, all the data which are uh, provided by the onboard system is captured in the highest sampling rate and it's provided for the validation and the 1550 data which is, but that is captured. Normally the auxiliary data which are sent to the payload system, which the post data processing, they are also captured and brought into the post process software. So the, there are a lot of data which have to be handled by the this uh, test system data processing software. Of course, the instrument mixed data which are stated locally in the test system, they are also synced with the onboard data so that we get line reference of all the data together to, to any analysis of. So some different databases will be there and up to 50 streams of data can be coming because that's much with other that many actuators will provide the data. And rates will be available, multiple frames of data. Typically, a lot of channels will they get mapped. And uh, so, in, the, in fact, the data had to be processed and brought into another processing. So, again, it can be reprocessed, something like that. Those schemes are present. The parameters, which in the 10,000 and 6,000 parameters, will be available and different processing types. This to do that. Normally, the databases are read into the database and uh, the, the cross reference lists are created. So the stream is arrived from the ground, from the onboard system, it's mapped from stream to map to the test system channels and the linked list of parameters which have to be processed. Some of the processing will again update back the test system channel so that it can be again processed again because the, the onboard data may not be straight forward or some different places it may be available, they may have to be brought together to process. So all the streams are worked out and it is capable of handling that type of data and make it available for, for the all the software. Also has uh, provisions to find out the anomaly display means the frame to frame what data has changed, it will give you a presentable big, big user to find out the issues. So that's what and aspect. So was to be done for the encoders and uh, we normally run one millisecond ISR to take off all the data acquisition systems and uh, the for the fifteen fifty three host communications. And uh, because uh, most of the discrete and non 15 53 are handled differently, there will be different company links will be available and uh, hardware based driver and 15 with device will take care of this type of requirements. And then processor is a multi threaded architecture with data acquisition simulation with the granularity of one millisecond so that it can carry the data acquisition interface with eight millisecond, which is our spec between uh, to find the, all the open profile checks and time synchronization. We also have an option with the GPS receiver in the ground system so that we can even the compare what is the clock drift rate of the onboard clock such as are available. And we may always, because uh, because we are normally synchronized to the onboard, sometimes we have to verify the onboard whether it is going properly so that we need an additional source. External source, normally the GPS source is used for that. And real IO performance is maintained. And now the Linux with real time variants are used in the OS. Important aspects which are various FDIR logics which was discussed yesterday. So, a lot of uh, logics with respect to interest where decisions are taken within some few cycles, and we may have to check the correctness of the decisions because we always say that we don't take uh, decision in a single sample. We may have to see that we actually have uh, three samples. Uh, uh, to see that three are uh, the requirement, how many of our samples are there. 
So that functions we have to check it. So we should see the negative part of it that if it is not failing, it's a, it's a spike, not supposed to respond, onboard is not supposed to respond. So it is com complicated. It is also involved to create a spike as an interface input and see the spike is entered to the onboard system. So it also requires like a simulator input profile where uh, the real time control is made and error simulation for negative checks. We try to give negative uh, a wrong data for a particular cycle and then remove the data and then try to give. So these are the some uh, things which are really required to see that the negative checks and actual positive checks into the FDA assimilation. These are uh, then for all the requirements. So, so much simpler things are like uh, uh, the checksum errors which can be created. And uh, so their data types errors are very simpler. The interface levels are also there. And uh, things sometimes we have the requirements to create a latency error, so the data comes with a larger latency that requires multiple buffers to be kept in the system. So these are uh, such things which involved in checking the FDR logics. All these functions are provided by this type of test system. So unless we are uh, or we are always in loop to see that the full software in loop simulation, whereas so far we are doing the hardware was available when the hardware not, not present. Also, we wanted to simulate this AOCC hardware of uh, sensor interface and actual interface and the sim of even the front end, the group test system hardware also as an interface in software. So all this we wanted to simulate, whereas the existing software of the rest of the test system software will be as it is. When these additional simulation simulators will be provided for the test system interface and the onboard interface hardware. That will be, uh, is being mainly aimed at and it is in progress and most of the cases uh, for not exact hardware simulation, but at least functional simulation level, it has been accomplished to see the logical and computational checks and data format checks, 15 receipts, HK checks are all uh, carried out. This is being envisaged or it is being attempted for in operations uh, for simulation purpose. So one more thing as was told is that uh, this is also being used for the critical mission phases to have the gated spacecraft testing. Uh, to have that uh, test will be available for any critical event, many like uh, the rehearsal of the operation or the accuracy establishments like, like uh, time Mars injection type of requirements or uh, target control maneuvers of Mars orbiter mission. We have to establish the accuracies whether we are having things. So those things were done. The validation of the profiles which we are going to uplink to the onboard. And in many cases there will be the requirements will come for the patch software operation. So all this will be valid first in this setup and then for uplinking to the onboard system. These are the which have been extensively used. So the other features are of course all the data logging, page display and time plotting, automatic testing and of the automatic testing gives output for okay not okay as a result so that people can see that. And of course all that be done, some of uh, most of the uh, things will be done in that mode. And also, there are simulators to give a bus controller simulators to the others to get tested. So these are the some of which shall be provided. Uh, to come to the where are the where we found some as an experience, we find uh, the uh, errors can be at the test level. So many errors can come. That is uh, the assumptions in the simulation, the exact assumption, or the timing, or something. The information may not be clearly available, so that causes some problem. The time synchronization errors is many times because time understanding is slightly difficult to find exactly uh, whether it is done or not. So sometimes this errors because some asynchronous systems are there, there are always issues. And sequence coverage, many times the sequence of the coverage will be different because when somebody tests in open loop, it becomes, uh, they don't go actual scenario. When you go for the actual scenario, always it's uh, uh, I mean, the precision accuracy and sampling and simulation errors the, the sampling uh, exactly has to be done, or uh, the accuracy and precision which we can provide in the ground system, or it may be poor or uh, higher, either of the problems, so that has to be attempted. And the uh, test coverage being insufficient, so these are the things. Many times, so the, 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 because all the data is available, whether it is the actuated data or housekeeping data, they are coming through a single, single host system. There have been cases where the clearances have been taken based on the diagnostic telemetry rather than, so that is one of the things when we integrated, this is one of the things which we see. So it cannot be, it has to be particularly seen that we are looking at the final output data also as well as the diagnostic data because diagnostic data is available in mission. 
where actual output is available in all other cases, our ground testing purpose. So many less critical ones like our scraping TM, in particular case will not be looked at. So it may give us small shock at the mission scenario. So those things are the things which we are looking at. And uh, sometimes the interrelated tests that uh, something made of the stimuli will not be given to exactly switch off the 15 b 3 simulator or not. So things are there and of course the errors. So find the solutions are in the terms of proper ICDs and mission scenario tests when we cover. Most cases are covered, the sequences, everything is normally covered. And mission validation is always done in a mission. And the limitations always are kept. What are the limitations? We should be clear on the simulation so that we also find an alternate method for validating whenever we have a doubt because there will be limitations in the simulation. And the review processes are in place and test case generations are from the requirements also, are also being in place. And there are, uh, there are observation tracking modes and the guidelines generation which take care of this type of thing. So just concluding that it has been extensively used for our AOCS and integrated OBC engines. Now same system is uh, being attempt being used for uh, health purpose order in the simulation with the uh, adequate table drive, star sensor simulator, everything. And the automation and data presentations are continuously improved. And normally the real time performance requirements will keep increasing to include better dynamics, better flexibility elements and models for the closed loops, they are always increasing, so always they are being upgraded. And the spin loop simulation is being used in testing operation. And uh, we are also looking into finding out how to model the hardware exactly as the author is going to see. We are in the process of doing it and completing. And normally, presently, they have our languages, auto test languages are all uh, in seven uh, formats. We are trying to explore on the standardized and always uh, we have a large test system if we are seeing. So we want to, these are the attempts we are uh, trying to do that. Just so I am just acknowledging our, all our uh, guests and Mr. Rupa and Mr. our chairman, director, and then our thanks to our FSW committee for making us come here present. Yes. And other I Is that exclusively a real-time kind of simulation, or do you run that in non-real-time modes as well? We are attempting for both because uh, sometimes we may have to do advanced processing for a longer time. We are also looking into the both aspects, real-time as well as non-real-time, where we may have to propagate for a day the path of the profile. We may have to go for non-time. We are attempting for having both. Of course, the host processor, the software limitations are there, which still there is. But also, we are attempting, we are keeping both options. Very good. Thank you.